Hey there, I am just wanting to respond to a question that I had. I do listen to you guys on my YouTube channel and so I wanted to share with you how I made the, well, I, how I converted this into a watercolor palette uh, because I did get a question about that and so I've um, showed you in my previous video, you may recognize my crappy bag, which I took um, on a cruise recently. And then I can take this really light amount of watercolor with me inside of this, and this will last me a real long time. So I wanted to show you how I made it. It's real, real simple. So I bought the set of 10 Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 watercolors and I took them out and um, what they are is they're just watercolor crayons like this and they sit right inside the palette here typically but I took them out and instead have made my own watercolor palette which I've filled with tubed watercolor so I um, just squeezed a little bit of the tube out and let them dry in the palette and that is how I've made this ready and I've put them in the order of the color wheel so that I'm ready to go with my main 12 here and then um, actually got 24 in by just doing a dab of some of the other ones in here. So what I wanted to show you here is how I did this so that I can use the lid as a palette. Uh, for me to actually do watercolor in. So as these come, whether it's an old one that you have or a new one that you have, there'll always be something in the lid. And the th thing that's so nice about these is they come, you can get a 15 size, which is great. Um, I'm using my 15 for Neo Color 2s, but this um, 10 size is just so tiny and easy to carry with you. And literally it's just feather light with all those watercolors in it. So it has a little uh, clamp style on the metal tin. And when you open it up, it'll have, um, if it's a new one, it'll have red on the inside. And if it's something else, you know, basically, if you've got yourself a metal tin that you wanna use, fine. But if you wanna use uh, this one, then I'll um, talk to you about that. So as you can see, the way that I've painted this, it's only in, the actual lid not the edges and the reason for that is is that I don't want to get any paint involved in the hinge section of this because then it will struggle here because I might actually get it stuck so what I've done is I've actually taped off everything except for this and I literally mean everything so what I used is some frog tape it's just um, a, a painter's tape where you mask things off it's masking tape and it has a real good seal on the edge, um, but will peel away. And you've got to be careful with these because if you build up too much paint next to them and let it dry for a really long time, then when you peel it off, it'll just pull the, t the paint and the tape, everything with it. Um, so you want to use some care, but essentially I just took pieces of it like this and then I just went in and taped things off in this sort of manner. And got right in there and made sure that I had a good seal all the way around the edge. And then what I did is I made sure that it was covering literally every inch of the entire thing. I actually um, find that when you are spraying paint, there is a real good likelihood that things are going to um, spray everywhere because it's over, um, it's airborne, like aerosol has a, a real spread and I don't want this to get anywhere else. So what I did was just cover it like this. Now, if I wanted to take the time, I could also paint the bottom of this one, which would make it great for seeing these colors, but I really don't think it matters. It's just an extra step. So um, what I will say is that the color of this, depending on which tape or which um, paint you use may discolor slightly over time, but I've put three layers on here. It's really nice and thick, and this is what I've used. Um, you might find something different where you are, but it's by a company called Rust-Oleum. And Rust-Oleum is really good for multi-purpose paints that are great for all kinds of different surfaces. 
um, they have a lot of specialized type projects that they deal with. So um, I got a gloss white finish and that gives me this glossy surface for my brushes to not get caught on. And then I got a multi-purpose paint, the, their Painter's Touch multi-purpose, which is a perfect finish on wood, metal, ceramics. So this is metal. I figured that would be perfect and that's what I used. You want to um, know a couple of things. I learned at a pretty young age how to use um, these sorts of things because my dad and grandfather um, and brother, all of them are contractors and builders and so I grew up on a building site actually and so I used a lot of spray paint and various um, paints growing up and there's a couple of things you can know about these sorts of things. So when you deal with this you want to wipe it off when you're done with your project so that nothing gets stuck um, and it doesn't come out the next time you're using it you want to shake it you can usually hear something inside you hear that that is something that will help mix the paint up and so you want to read the instructions and do as much as you can a good minute if you will um, to just give it a really good thorough mixing and that will ensure that when you spray you're not going to get a patchy result so give it a good um, amount of tossing around in all sorts of different directions so that it's thoroughly mixed inside and it doesn't feel lopsided in, in any way um, and it all feels plenty mixed and have it all taped off and then set it on your flat surface that is completely covered outside in a well ventilated area for sure you don't want to be breathing this in and then um, just make sure you're not doing this on a rainy day or when there are um, lots of bugs around or lots of wind you want a low wind sunny day where you are away from bugs so if you need to put it on a table elevated from where the bugs want to be around the grassy area that will help you uh, because the white surface for some reason really attracts bugs and you don't want to leave it out to dry and then have bugs go and get stuck in it and ruin your surface. It's um, really obnoxious. I actually had it happen myself um, and I did everything I could to pre prevent it. So once I was done spraying it, I actually took it in to the garage and left it to dry there away from the bugs and in my second and third layers. So what you do is when you're ready to spray and it's spraying down, you want to make sure that you're a good distance away from what you're doing. And that will mean that as you do fast sweeping motions of painting, you're not right here where it doesn't have anywhere to spread. You wanna be far enough away that it can actually distribute evenly into the area. And hence the reason it's so important for you to um, make sure and tape off everything around. In fact, I taped on the opposite side here too. And despite doing that, I still got a little bit of overspray that showed up uh, because these things, they just find a way to get in. So once you have taped everything off and you've given it a spray, just give it a light coat, let it dry completely for as long as it says to dry. In my case, I think that was um, touch dry in about 20 minutes, hard in 24 hours. So I gave it about 45 minutes before I went ahead and did a second layer. Then I got another 45 minutes, came back, and literally it only takes a few minutes. The most important and long part of this project is taping everything off. So just get yourself some good tape, tape everything off, and do those thin layers. If you're gonna do really thick, gloopy layers, that's when the tape is gonna get stuck and peel your paint off. And then that's it. That's as easy as it is. You wait for 24 hours and then gently peel your tape up. So a little um, note here that when you are peeling your tape up, say your tape is like this, don't pick it up like this and start pulling it this way. You're pulling right in the direction of everything that's holding on to it and it's just gonna peel straight up um, and be more likely to take some of your paint with you. Instead, get a hold of it like this um, and find a way to actually peel away from what you're doing like this. This gives you less chance of actually pulling 
the paint away. And by then, you will have yourself a nice palette that's ready to use after 24 hours. It's completely cured. I found that this did go, you can see the color is just ever so slightly yellowed and that's fine. That is a project finished in about a month or so. It takes on that yellowish color. If you find another one and you wanna test another product, um, go for it. Just remember that it needs to be good for metal and it needs to be um, something which is going to not give you a hard time with your brushes. It's going to dry really uh, with that sort of sheen and gentleness that you find on this surface. That's going to make it better. In fact, just so you know, these two are actually stickers. It comes even plainer than that. I put these on because they came with it and they're cute. So when I'm finished with this, it closes right up and I'm good to go. I've got everything I need here, a travel brush with water in it. Um, this is the Pentel Aquash. And then we've got um, it, these, I put Daniel Smith watercolor in here. You could put Winsor & Newton watercolor. I uh, encourage you, if you haven't, I'll link below, check out my Color Made Simple course. I actually talk about what colors I put in here exactly to make a perfect color wheel, how to learn about mixing colors, how it all works, so that you can be um, a, a real whiz at all things color. And then you can actually learn how to um, take these colors and make something really beautiful with ease and know exactly what you're doing, which I would love to help you with. It's so, so fun. And I think that everybody should have a little bit of a, a travel thing like this. In fact, it's so quiet and easy to use that you could take this with you to church and do this to um, do some Bible journaling during your sermon notes. You could do some urban sketching, take this out with you um, and into rural areas and it'll just fit on a very small surface and give you something to mix your colors with and create to your heart's content. I hope you found this helpful and we'll um, get started again. Um, I'm not going to link to any of the products in this particular video, but you've seen and I've explained them. So do watch again if you need to. And I hope you found this helpful. I'll link to that course below if that is something that you want to learn with me. I'd love to help you. See you soon.